Hey guys, Yuri K here. Today's topic for discussion will be the thyroid gland and how to keep your thyroid healthy. First, let's begin by explaining what the, exactly the thyroid is, how it works, and what its purpose is. The thyroid is one of the larger glands in the endocrine system. It weighs about two to three grams in newborns and 25 grams in the average adult. Women generally have larger thyroids than men do and pregnancy will increase the size of the thyroid as more thyroid hormone is required. The thyroid's main functions are the regulation of the metabolism, protein synthesis, as well as controlling the sensitivity to a number of other hormones. It also produces calcitonin, which controls the calcium levels in the body, and that is calcium homeostasis. The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland it basically has what looks like two butterfly wings called lobes, one on the left and one on the right, and the right one is generally larger than the left. The thyroid is located in the front part of the neck, just below the Adam's apple for men, and leans up and against the trachea, known as the windpipe, as well as the larynx, known as the voice box. So it would be located basically right about here in this area. To perform its functions, the thyroid secretes thyroid hormone known as T3 and T4, which is synthesized primarily from iron and tyrosine, one of the amino acids. There are a number of things that can affect the thyroid function. For example, the thyroid can become overactive, secreting too much thyroid hormone. It can also become underactive, not secreting enough thyroid hormone. Furthermore, it can also develop cancer, as well as nodules, which are masses of cells generally benign in nature. When the conditions of an overactive or underactive thyroid occur, it can create something known as a goiter, which is a bulging mass in the neck. All right, so the first condition is an overactive thyroid. This is generally caused by something known as Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease, which causes an overstimulation of the thyroid gland. And this creates too much thyroid hormone being produced in the body. Oftentimes this will produce a toxic goiter or mass in the neck due to the toxic high level of thyroid hormones. Drug-induced excessive consumption of iodine can also overstimulate the thyroid, producing too much thyroid hormone. Again, the overstimulation of the thyroid is known as hyperthyroidism. Graves' disease is normally managed by taking medication that suppresses the thyroid function. Also, some people choose to remove their thyroid gland altogether. However, this will actually cause the opposite effect. This will naturally create a situation of hypothyroidism. The thyroid is no longer there. So now, the person will be required to take thyroid hormone synthetically in order to boost their thyroid levels. Not a suggested option. Symptoms of hyperthyroidism include weight loss, an increased appetite, insomnia, decreased sensitivity to heat, palpitations, tremors, anxiety, and nervousness. In some cases, it can cause chest pain, diarrhea, hair loss and muscle weakness and these symptoms are normally treated with beta blocker medications. Now this brings me to the other condition which is an underactive thyroid also known as hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is caused by a deficiency in iodine which unfortunately is common in third world and developing countries. Iodine is essential to proper thyroid function and without sufficient iodine, the thyroid cannot properly produce thyroid hormone because thyroid hormone is synthesized out of iodine primarily. While iodine is essential to the health and well-being of the thyroid, other vitamins and minerals also play an important role. Selenium, iron, and vitamin A are also very important to the health of the thyroid gland. Now in the developing world, where there is often an insufficient amount of iodine in the diet, 
This can negatively affect the children as well. It can create a condition known as cretinism, whereby not enough thyroid is produced in children, and this can lead to stunted growth as well as mental retardation. Being that thyroid hormone production is essential to the physical and mental development of children. Okay, now while this is a problem in the developing world, as I mentioned, hypothyroidism and underactive thyroid can also occur in the developed world, even where there is sufficient iodine in the diet. This is usually caused by a condition known as Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disorder. This creates a situation where the antibodies that are produced actually damage the thyroid gland itself, reducing the ability to absorb iron and thus reducing the production of thyroid hormone. The purpose of antibodies, obviously, is to fight disease in the body. They look for foreign invaders, bacteria and germs, which are disease-causing, and try to kill them and wipe them out of the system. Now, when the antibodies think that the thyroid itself is the foreign invader, they will actually begin to attack and damage the thyroid gland itself. This is known as Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. It generally begins after the age of 30 and is more prevalent in women than it is in men. It can also be a genetic condition which tends to run in families and oftentimes is accompanied by type 2 diabetes as well as celiac disease, which is extreme sensitivity to gluten. Hashimoto's disease is normally controlled by taking thyroid hormone stimulating medication. Now, hypothyroidism, whether caused by insufficient consumption of iodine or an autoimmune disorder such as Hashimoto's, can create a goiter, which is an increase in the size of the thyroid when it's trying to overcompensate by producing additional thyroid hormone. In addition, hypothyroidism can be caused by the surgical removal of the thyroid gland itself, usually due to an overactive thyroid, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so how will we recognize an underactive thyroid? Hypothyroidism will cause the metabolism to slow down, and this will manifest itself through a number of symptoms. Most commonly, one will experience unusual and unexplained weight gain, tiredness, puffiness in the face due to water retention, sensitivity to cold, a slowed heart rate, constipation, baldness, and heavy menstrual bleeding in women. Now, let's discuss ways that we can keep the thyroid healthy. One of the most important things that we can do is to avoid the consumption of gluten, which is contained in products such as wheat, barley, and rye. Gluten is a protein which is hard on the body and is actually not recognized and is considered a foreign substance. So when we consume gluten, the body will actually create antibodies which will attack the protein, but in addition, will attack the thyroid gland itself. Most people have a sensitivity to gluten to varying degrees. Celiacs will experience extreme sensitivity. However, most people will have varying degrees of sensitivity as well. And these can be manifested through a number of symptoms. Hormonal imbalance because gluten disrupts the endocrine system's regulation of hormones in the body, as well as fatigue, brain fog, migraine headaches, depression, skin problems, and arthritis. These are symptoms that are prevalent in many people, and a lot of us don't even consider the fact that gluten may be the primary cause for these symptoms. So for this reason, it is best to avoid gluten altogether, most especially for people that are sensitive to it, and by eliminating gluten, this will be one of the best things they can do to help your autoimmune condition such as a Hashimoto's disease. Another thing to consider are substances known as bromines and bromides, which are endocrine disruptors. 
And the way they do this is by competing for the same receptors in the thyroid gland that take in iodine. So when the thyroid gland receptors begin to take in bromines instead of iodine, they begin to displace the iodine that we consume. And this will result in low iodine levels in the body, which again will reduce thyroid hormone production and create hypothyroidism. Bromines are very common and are found in a number of places, such as pesticides, plastics, such as the ones used in computers, bakery goods, certain sodas, especially Mountain Dew, and citrus flavored sodas, such as Fanta and Spectra, upholstery, such as the ones used in furniture and the interior of cars, fire retardants, certain medications, and bromine-based hot tub and pool treatments. So as you can see, bromines are very common and are nearly impossible to eliminate altogether. However, we can greatly reduce our exposure to them. For example, methyl bromide is the pesticide which is sprayed on strawberries commonly grown in California. We can solve this problem by eating organic strawberries, which are not sprayed with pesticides. Brominated vegetable oil, or BVO, is commonly used in Mountain Dew and citrus-flavored sodas in order to suspend the flavoring in the liquid, also known as emulsification. They are emulsifiers. Mountain Dew is one of the worst beverages that you can possibly drink. It's like a weapon of health mass destruction in a can. Not only does it contain bromated vegetable oil, it also has high fructose corn syrup, which is going to promote obesity and type 2 diabetes, as well as containing about 55 grams of caffeine in the can. It also has a number of artificial colorings and flavorings which are known carcinogens. They promote cancer. Obviously, the best way to avoid exposure to BVOs is by eliminating the consumption of these very harmful beverages. Potassium bromate is commonly added as an additive to commercial breads, bakery goods, and baked items. In fact, brominated flour is used to what commercial baking companies call enrich the flour causing it to be more elastic and hold better consistency. However, some food manufacturers, such as Pepperidge Farms, have found a way to eliminate enriching their flour with potassium bromate without claiming to have any of these structural problems. Potassium bromate is sometimes added to toothpastes and mouthwashes as an antiseptic and astringent. However, many people have reported inflammation, and bleeding of the gums as a result. Potassium bromate is one of the leading causes of overexposure and toxicity to bromides and bromines, and one of the best ways to reduce our exposure is to eliminate the consumption of commercially produced bread, baked goods, and baked items. And it is also very important to carefully read the labels on toothpaste and mouthwashes so that they don't contain any potassium bromate or anything resembling bromate, bromine, or bromide. And again, we can research and find out which food manufacturers do not use potassium bromate in their goods, or we can go with organic products in general, which will eliminate our exposure to potassium bromate.